Hello everyone, welcome back to the channel and welcome to another VFR 800 VTEC video. Um, this is obviously the second one I've done in uh, as many weeks um, and there has been a little bit of a VFR drought recently on the channel because I haven't needed to do anything. However, what I'm going to be doing today is fitting a set of Hell Performance braided brake lines. Now, obviously as you can see, there's an awful lot in this kit. There's, I think it's 13 lines or maybe even 14. I can't remember off the top of my head. But it's quite a significant kit. There's a lot of stuff in here. So yeah, we need to uh, we need to obviously get this on the bike. So it's not as straightforward as a normal bike. A normal bike would probably only have about three lines. One from, uh, sorry, two, should I say, from the master cylinder. Uh, one going down to each of the front calipers and then another one from the rear master cylinder going to the rear caliper. And that is pretty much it on a, on a standard uh, braking system on a, on a, on a motorcycle. Um, obviously having combined braking, ABS, all that good stuff on this machine, that complicates things quite significantly. So what we'll be doing is um, replacing each line um, for the stainless steel ones. But what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna do it in a methodical fashion. So I'll probably work from front to back, um, remove a line, replace it with one from the kit. Uh, I think that's probably the most straightforward way of doing it. Um, obviously what I will need to do is I will need to re uh, drain the brake fluid from the braking system. So I'll do that in a, you know, in a short while. Um, I'm not gonna go into any detail on that because I've done brake bleed in videos previously. So I'll leave a link to that um, in the top corner. So you can go and check that out. Um, if I was to do that in this video, that would more than double the length of the video because the brake bleeding, pro brake, brake bleeding process, <laughs> that's, that's quite hard to uh, say for some reason this morning. Um, obviously I didn't put my teeth in properly. Um, yeah, the, the brake bleeding process on this bike is, um, is a lot more complicated than a regular machine. So uh, that's worth bearing in mind. So yeah, go check that video out if you want to. Um, as you can see, there is no bodywork on this bike. I've taken it off just to, uh, well, it's gonna help me uh, get into all the brake lines and all that good stuff. So if you wanna uh, see how I got the bike to this state, I'll leave a link to that video up in the corner now, so go and check that one out as well. Uh, the links to all of those I'll also leave in the description uh, just in case you're on a device that doesn't show um, the cue cards in the top corner. Okay, I think what we'll do, the best place to start is to take this kit over to the bench, whip the bag open and see what's in uh, inside. If you're interested that's the part number the help performance part number um, so you can go and uh, yeah check it out um, obviously it's all available on hellperformance.com um, what I did do is I bought these on the Black Friday and um, help performance normally have a really really good discount on Black Friday um, and I normally wait until then to to buy anything from them and um, that's worth bearing in mind as well so let's have a look at all this lot right so um, yeah, there's, uh, there's some weird and wonderful things in this. You've got these little blocks. Um, you've got connectors like that. What else we got? We've got one of those ones. Another shorter one. That one's a bit shorter. What else we've got? It's a longer one. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten, eleven lines. There's eleven lines in this kit, so I was off, off a bit. Um, yeah, so uh, what we need to do is obviously work out which ones are which and how they uh, how they go on the bike. Um, now, um, I know some of these come off of the ABS units and the proportion involves some of these shorter ones because I've had a little look at them. Um, I'm assuming that some of the longer ones go from the proportion in valve to the rear caliper at the back of the bike. I'm pretty sure that one goes from 
uh, or up to, should I say, the ABS modulator. I'm pretty sure that one goes to the ABS modulator. Um, and I think, I think these ones here with these blocks on gun, uh, gun come from the uh, front calipers um, up to the front of the bike where the hard lines take over and run down the sides of the frame. But we'll obviously have a look at all of that um, very, very shortly. So yeah, um, that's the kit. Uh, as you can see, you know they're, they're exquisitely made. I love I love how well made um, Hell Performance stuff is, and everything's really nicely machined. And these little plastic blocks are a, a nice little touch as well. Um, there are different banjos in this kit. Obviously, that's a double. There's fatter ones as well. That's got a different thread pitch, so that's worth bearing in mind. Um, you know when we uh, when we come up putting it on, um, because obviously they they'll only go into the places where they you know need to be. Um, so yeah, that's. Uh, that's that kit. Um, in here, we've got some, uh, you know, some brief instructions. Obviously, they're not they're not ma um, make or model specific, so it's uh, you know it's worth bearing that in mind. Um, and obviously, we've got the uh, obligatory stickers as well. Everybody loves a sticker in their kits. So yeah, I think what we need to do now is um, move over to the bike. And I think what we'll do next is we'll start by. Um, Getting the uh, getting the fluid out, or as much fluid out of the lines as we can, um, only because when we crack all the banjos, we, we don't want weeping fluid everywhere. Um, and it, it will just save us a, a bit of pain in the long run. Um, so um, you've seen me do that before. All I'm going to do is I'm going to go around uh, each of the uh, each of the uh, bleed nipples on the calipers, both the front ones and the rear one, uh, and drain out as much fluid as I can. Um, uh, and then yeah, we can uh, we can set about exchanging the old rubber lines for the uh, for the health performance ones. So let's get stuck into it. Okay to begin with all I'm going to do is I'm going to remove the, uh, the top cap off of the brake fluid reservoir and I'm going to use this syringe to suck out as much fluid as I can. Um, that way I'm not having to purge as much out of the bleed nipples. And what I'll do, I'll stick a little bit of tissue around here just to be safe. suck up as much brake fluid as I can and then put it into my dirty brake fluid jar for disposal. Um, this step's not 100% necessary because obviously you can just you can just pull it out through the nipples but it just makes the process a little bit quicker. there now you can see that um, you know I've got most of it out um, a little, a little dry and then the last little bit in the bottom and just soak up with me rag and obviously that's that done now obviously uh, brake fluid is supposed to be changed every two years as a minimum anyway that's the manufacturers um, i.e. Honda's uh, recommendation, that would be the recommendation for most manufacturers. Most manufacturers would say two years. Obviously being hygroscopic, it does um, absorb water out of the atmosphere and that's the reason why. So um, if you're coming up due a brake fluid change then that's probably the ideal time to obviously fit this kit. Um, uh, you, you know, if you, if you go into the hassle of changing the fluid anyway, you might as well change the, the hoses at the same time. Uh, right then, um, what we'll be doing next is cracking off all the nipples and sucking the fluid out from the calipers. Okay, what we're gonna do is we're gonna quickly just suck the fluid out of all the uh, all the bleed nipples. I'm gonna do it in a particular order and I'm gonna be using a vacuum pump, uh, which you know we've all seen plenty of times, so I'm not gonna labor the point. I'll leave the link to this tool in the description if you wanna go and um, get one for yourself. They're pretty cheap and they're worth every penny. So 
quick spanner on there, put the hose over the nipple, build up the vacuum and then crack off the nipple and then all I've got to do is maintain the vacuum and you can see the fluid coming out and it'll be captured in this little uh, it'll be captured in this little tub and I'll just keep going across each of the bleed nipples until such time as no more fluid comes out. Okay, for the rear caliper, what I've done is I've removed the center bolt that um, mounts the bracket onto the swing arm and the, the rear bolt is literally loosened and then that allows the caliper just to swing down like so. And then I've just nipped up the rear bolt just to hold it secure. Um, now the caliper, when we do the bleeding after the installation of the new hoses, the caliper does actually have to come off and be rotated and mounted onto the disc. But uh, as I said, I'm not gonna, uh, go into all the bleeding process in this video. So, out at one. Same again for the inner one. And there we are, that is all the brake lines empty of fluid. So now we can uh, we can crack off the banjos on all the on all the um, hoses and there'll be you know a lot less fluid escape and it'll be a lot cleaner and easier to achieve. So let's uh, let's start looking at the hoses then. Okay, so uh, now we've dealt with the uh, with the boring part of you know draining all the fluid out. What we can do now is actually move on to the process by which we actually change the uh, the, the hoses themselves. Now, obviously what we need to do is identify what um, hoses in the kit replace what hoses on the bike. And there's a couple of little bits in there. You think, oh, is that, is that the right one? Is that the right one? But then when you actually delve down into it, it is pretty obvious because um, they're almost like for like. Um, and this one, for example, is obviously going to fit here uh, because it's the, only case, it's the only hose that matches this one hose here on the bike. Um, there's obviously quite a lot of hoses at the front, but this is the only one that can replace this part here. As you can see, this hard line comes out that goes over to the other side and that goes into here. And, you know, things like things like the, the angle of the banjos are, uh, are a bit of a giveaway as well. So, you know, those, those are the kind of things we need to look at. Um, things like this, on this line here, there is only one of these on the factory one, whereas on the other side, uh, this hose here, for example, has two, and there's another hose uh, in the kit which has got three of these on. So, obviously, on the bike, um, the, the standard hoses will have three of these on. So, you know, it's just a case of matching them all up. So, anyway, what we'll do now is um, obviously uh, bust open these banjos and disconnect these hard lines. Right, obviously, we've removed as much fluid as we can, but what I'm going to do just to be on the safe side, so don't worry, you want to drip brake fluid all over the wheels, is I'm gonna wrap a bit of this around just to be, just to be safe. And then when I bust open the, 
this banjo here, it'll it'll be caught by the uh, by the tissue. Now these are 12 mil. I've got a 12 mil spanner, but I've also got a 12 mil socket, so I'll use that instead. And there we are. So there's not much in the way of weeping at the moment, so hopefully we'll be okay. And then obviously we'll, we we. Got to disconnect this hard line up here. Now, this is a 10 mil banjo. Annoyingly, I've got a, te uh, a 9 and 11 um, open ended flare, which are designed for this very thing, but I don't have a 10 mil one, so um, I'm going to have to use a regular 10 mil socket. Now, this um, this bolt here bolts into the mudguard um, uh, retaining bracket just here. So, what I've done is I've tightened that down just to make sure that it's um, not going to go anywhere, and then we can crack that one off now obviously it's very easy to round stuff like this off so it's worth bearing in, bearing that in mind uh, the, hopefully this tissue here will catch anything that drips out of here okay there's a bit dripping but we are catching it with the tissue so we're all good and there we are right so now we've got this one loose here all we can do is now is we can Undo the 8mm bolt here. And remove the rest of the banjo. Bearing in mind that there are two washers, one either side of the banjo. So we'll rescue both of those. There are brand new ones in the kit along with new bolts. And there we are, that is this end of that hose completely free up here there's a little where the abs line is there's a little a little clamp just holding the abs line onto the hose so what we'll do is we'll rescue that because we'll need that again later and there it is we'll we'll use that again later once we've installed the new one okay up here is where i was talking about this little thing here and what we need to do is undo the clamp and that is again another 8 mil bolt just in there so let's get ourselves a line to undo that and there we go For that a little screw put that down there because we need that again later and then we can open up that bracket because we'll be reusing that again later so i'll put the screw back with it and pop it down there right now as you can see there is a little bit of fluid dripping down so we'll get as much of that up as we can um, but at least we're not getting it all over the paintwork on the wheels which is good in fact, what I'll do now is I can actually pop that tissue into there so it soaks it up directly, just like so. Right, now what we need to do now is um, head up top to the ABS modulator because that is where this hose runs to. So let's, uh, let's make our way up there. Okay. So up here, obviously on the ABS modular, modulator, this hose comes up, the one we've been working on comes up to here, up to this like weird union here and then fits here on the ABS modulator. Now this here isn't on the replacement um, hoses uh, and it's only really there to ensure that the, the, the hose goes in a certain direction and it's basically clamped onto this block. So we can remove that from the block by undoing the bolt underneath. Whipping the bolt out. And then as you can see, it's free to move now. 
but obviously behind here as you can see we've got this bracket here which also holds all of these cables in place so when we reassemble we do need to put that back so I'll pop that through there okay so now this cable is pretty much free apart from at this end so what we need to do is undo this one I'll get a bit of tissue just on the off chance hopefully be all right but there'll be a little bit in there still you know you can't bleed it all completely out and then we'll pull the banjo out along with its washers just like so so if I pull the banjo out like that pop that on there drop that down okay so now there's absolutely nothing holding this line onto the bike. So if I pull this direction, we'll pull it all the way through along with the tissue that I stuffed in the end of the banjo earlier on. And there we are. That that is that line. So um if we compare it to the one which we're replacing it with, as you can see, they are similar length and pretty much identical with the ex obvious exception of this part here. So um, one thing we will have to do is ensure that when we replace the uh, banjo bolt into the ABS modulator that the banjo is um, orientated in such a way that the, cave, the the hose itself is pushed towards the frame and then we could probably just put a little zip tie or something around there just to hold it together maybe zip tie it onto the, the one next to it um, so yeah that should be fine um, right next let's get this uh, let's get this hose fitted okay so we've got the hose here the uh, the replacement and all I'm going to do is I'm going to feed feed it down through where it needs to go and down there and there we go right now I've got a uh, replacement banjo here the banjo goes through the top like so washer on both sides of the banjo and then simply screw it down now, as I said, obviously we want it to go kind of in that direction there. Now, the replacement banjo bolts are 14 millimeter, not uh, 12 millimeter like the ones that came off. Um, and now, they are torqued and the spec in the hell book is uh, 14 foot pounds or which, which is approximately 19 Newton meters. So uh, that's what we'll do them up to. However, I'm not gonna torque any of the banjos until such time as all the lines are on because some of the lines interact with each other. And it may well be that they need to be slightly moved, you know, because there there is a, a you know a, a limited amount of adjustment in that whilst it's not torqued, so I can like you know tweak it in the direction it needs to go. So it's worth bearing that in mind. So yeah, I'll get them all on where they need to go first, and then we'll come around and we'll talk them all on. But yeah, 14 foot pounds or 19 newton meters is the way to go. So obviously we've got this little um, this little rubber bung thing up here which goes on at the bracket but there is another hose from this caliper that goes also through that bracket so those will be done at the same time so we don't need to worry about that right now but what I do need to do is feed it down so that this goes to the caliper on the other side of the bike which is where it's where it is right now so yeah now what we can do is we can uh, loosely fit it to the caliper on that side okay so down here what we need to do is just fit that bolt through just like so lost my little socket which is over there And then we can tighten that up. Nipped. 
Okay, these little blocks are only plastic, so we don't need to over egg it, you know, just, just give it a little nip up. Now this one, again, we'll take our new banjo and the new washer. And get the bolt started. Like so. Now what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna allow the 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 line to basically sit where it wants to root itself and it kind of wants to be in that position. However, it would probably be better off there. So I'm gonna root it so it sits like that. Um, but you know, as I said, I'm not tightening anything up yet until such time as you know everything's um, in the right place. So yeah, I'll uh, come back and talk everything up. The hard line then needs to be manoeuvred into place and simply screwed down. Find the correct spanner. There it is. And give it a little tighten, and there we are. That is the first line installed. As I said, that comes up to here, next to this, where this one is, and we'll go into the uh, into the bracket up there. Um, but yeah, that's uh, that is the first one done. The um, the uh, ABS line uh, also comes up here and will um, clip onto here with the uh, with this. Um, however, the clip itself is a little bit bigger than um, the old one. Uh, you know, the, the 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 hose itself is thinner than the old one. So, what I might actually have to do is just use a little zip tie just to uh, help it stay where it is. Now, one thing is of um, obvious here is that this line did go behind this one. But um, what I'll do is when I change this line over, I'll make sure that this one goes in front of this one, um, not the other way around. So that's uh, that's something that I want to bear in mind when I um, when I come to changing these ones over this one i'm going to root behind these ones because that's the way it was okay so let's move on to the lines on this caliper okay the next hose that we're going to replace is there is this one and this one is going to replace this one here which comes down to the rear of the secondary master cylinder comes all the way up here to this block and this is where it terminates into the hard line with this block here so what I'll do, I'll start um, at the bottom here, um, and we'll uh, we'll uh, obviously we'll disconnect the we'll disconnect the banjo at the bottom. Let's grab a bit of tissue just in case. We should hopefully be all right. This one's a bit of a awkward one to get into. There's one of the washers, and there we go. So we'll pop that down there, and as before, it comes up to this little bracket up here. So what we'll do is we will disconnect it. Tight. Obviously, I could have helped myself by, you know, putting the bolt back in, but that actually bolts into the mud guard. So, and there's the bracket off the back, and Wiggle out the bolt. And then open up the bracket. It just bends open. As you can see, it's quite flexible. Put that down there. And here we go. And there is the, uh, the hose removed. Now, obviously, 
Um, the bracket that we removed when we did the other side, that is what this one here goes into. And my finger's on right now. That's um, that's what that one goes into. So that'll be done at the end. But we can now pull the hose up through here. And there we are. So if I get up off my bum, we can now see here what we need to do. Now, if I pop this bolt back in just to hold this bracket in place, it'll probably do us a favour. Obviously, I don't want to cross thread it. There we are. Now, if I take my 10mm spanner, what we can do is undo the hard line, just like that. This one's a little bit stiffer. Come on, if I get my fingers. No, you can maybe take you all the way out with the spanner, right? Yeah, it's going to be one of them annoying ones where it doesn't go finger tight. It's going to literally make me take it all the way out with a spanner. Ah, there we go. Right. Okay. So, there we go. That is the banjo and the hard line loose. So what we can do now is we can undo this little bolt again. And then we can pull the block off the hard line. And there we are, that is that one out too. So now let's get the new one on. Okay, new line with the two rubber grommets. We'll feed it up where we need to go. And we'll pop it onto the hard line first. And then I will gently fit the bolt which will help keep it in place There we go, but what we need to do is make sure that it's in line with the hard line, otherwise we'll struggle to get it started. And then, obviously, that's what I need to do next is get it started. There we go, it's going in quite nicely. And then, 10 mil spanner. And just nip it up. Worthy, worthy of mention that these do actually come out of these little blocks if you need to. You don't have to keep them in the blocks, but obviously you want it orientated correctly. So you need to make sure that however you tighten it, 
is pointing in the right direction, so that's worthy of note. Obviously that bolt's got to come out in order to fit this bracket again later on, um, but we'll do that later. We don't need to do that right now. Then this hose comes down to here, just like so, just like that. Those two can go back up there, they don't need to be there, right. Obviously, I need to make sure I get the routing correct, which I think that is right. Yeah, and then one of those is going to go off the bracket just here. So what I need to do, go get another banjo, and then we can get that one done up. Okay, here's the banjo. Get that in there. Get the washer on. And then... Tighten her up. This one's quite awkward to get into. Obviously, if you take the wheel off, it'll give you a bit more access, but... There we go, that is the next one done and that will obviously go into the bracket once we've changed this line here and then again what I've done I've left the, the banjo loose so that we can you know make adjustments to it as and when we need to um, and then yeah that's uh well, we're doing all right so far. So what I need to do next, I think, is this one here. And this one is going up to another block on the other side of the frame, I believe. Yeah, I can feel it. So it's basically the same as this, but on the other side. So that's the one we're going to do next. Okay, so the next line then from the secondary master cylinder. What I've done is I've taken the liberty of removing the block and the hard line from the other side of the frame. There was another bracket, much like the one for the other side, holding them in. I've, I've done all that bit because obviously I, I'm not gonna keep going over the same things because um, obviously it you know, makes, the, makes the video a little bit boring. But what I will do here is take the time to just talk about the end here. As you can see, we've got this double banjo affair and that is because it comes from here at this banjo up underneath this banjo and then terminates here into a double um, so it's like one line um, so what we need to do is we do need to remove this banjo here again it's a little bit awkward because you know everything's in the way um, I've got my tissue under here just in case anything comes out the secondary master cylinder and we'll take this banjo bolt out and there we are and there's the bolt I can feel the washer but I can't grab it we'll, we'll recover the washer in a second um, and then the same again at this end <sighs> Make sure we catch any fluid. There's that washer that <laughs> came out of there, it just dropped down. And there we are, that's how we can see now how it's how it's arranged. It is a weird one. And there is a little bit of fluid coming out down here, so I do want to capture all of that. I don't want it ended up dripping on the wheels. And then we can remove the line from the bike. Let me just make sure that I catch any fluid from the secondary master cylinder. I'll leave that tissue just there, just in case. 
and there we go. We can see exactly how it was arranged. It was sitting on the bike just like that. So what we want is this one to sit on the bike in exactly the same fashion. So it's going to be like that. It's going to be orientated that way around. So yeah, it's going to go in like so and then come up to here like that. Yeah, pretty pretty self-explanatory. Just basically install it in the same way that the old one came off. So what I need to do is go and grab me, uh, grab me banjos off of the bench and then we can get that one installed. Okay, I think what's gonna be the easiest way to do it is to get this one in first, then that one in last. So if I pop that banjo through there. If I move my tissue out of the way now. Yeah, right, get the other washer on. Make sure it stays on. And then get it started. And there we are, we're started. Okay. And that is up to touch. And then this one will simply come around like so. Get that in. Now, one thing that is worth mentioning is that there is a shoulder just there. And if you just tighten it down, what you can do is end up tightening so that, that shoulder sits on the edge. And then obviously it will feel tight, but it isn't. So it's worth bearing in mind that it does need to be like that. Um, especially when you, you you know you're doing it by feel like that one there is quite hard to see what's going on, but um, it's worth uh, worth bearing that in mind. And then give it a little wiggle. And yeah, it's a bit a bit awkward because I'm kind of going against the direction that the the hose wants to to follow. Really, it's. I would advise you to obviously do this by hand before you even entertain getting any tools anywhere near it so that you don't cross thread anything. as you tighten it down. Right, there we go, we've definitely got that started. So, what I'm gonna do, just again, get it up to touch. We'll come back round and we will talk everything at the end. And there we go, and there we are, that is that one done that one is up to touch and then this hose goes in front of everything else and then goes up between the frame between the headstock and the fork leg and then comes out basically on the opposite side basically where this one is but on the other side so yeah we'll pop that up there and there we go right so both of these are going to go through the bracket here but obviously we, that can't be done until such time as we've done this. Okay, so this line here is now rooted up. It's bolted to the side of the uh, side of the headstock. Some things that we need to do up there later on, but we're not going to go into that now. Um, obviously, we'll we'll get to that later. What we're going to do now is concentrate on this line here, and then that's this caliper finished, and that's pretty much both front calipers done once this one's changed. So I've selected the line from the kit, and as you can see. This is the right length, the orientation of the banjo is correct, and we've got the block on the end. What we need to do now is we need to remove the hard line from here um, and get it off this block, but obviously this is quite wobbly and it's um, obviously the hard line is gonna be tight. So what I'll do, I'll use a set of mole grips and then get my spanner and then we'll crack her off. There we go. That 
wasn't too bad. And then we can undo that. Can now take the mole grips off. Undo it. There we go, that is one end disconnected. So next, we just need to undo this banjo. And again, a bit of tissue underneath. And whip the bolt out. Not forgetting the other washer. And then clean up any mess and what I'll do just in case a bit more weeps out I'll just leave that there for the moment so there we go that is that line removed let's drop that down there put the washers back on okay so this line Obviously, it needs to go onto that hard line up there and then down here like so. Got our new banjo. Washer on either side. And just start her off like so. And just up to touch. And then what we need to do is obviously get the hard line started which was pretty easy. And then with my spanner, just tighten her up so she's nice and nice and snug. And there we go. just give this a little nip just to keep the orientation right and there we are okay so what I can do now is I can refit all the bracketry um, for the uh, for, for this block obviously that goes on there just like so and then that one goes on that side like that with these two cables going th uh, these two hoses going through it so it basically sits like like so um, so what I'll do I'll get all of that put back together and then what we'll do is we'll move up to the other side of the yoke because we're pretty much done on this side all the uh, all the soft lines are done all these hard lines is all that remain so they're staying as they are so yeah all the uh, all the hoses that go down at the front are done so what we'll do is we'll go to the yoke on the other side and then we'll look at obviously what we've um, what we've been doing over there and then the line that runs from the master cylinder and then obviously enters into the rest of the system is on that side so that's where we'll be next so yeah i'll get all of this done and then we'll uh, we'll pick up over there Right then, as you can see, we've got this hose here that's coming up through the forks um, up to this point. And this is the one that goes to the caliper on the left-hand side and fits into this hard line up here. That's um, That's been snugged up and that's all good. So what we've got here, um, as you can see, the bolt is still out um, because what we do need to do is there's another hard line just here uh, and this goes into this soft line and that is the one that comes up through the forks and up to the master cylinder at the front. And to replace that one it is this hose here. As you can see, it's got a different type of union and that will basically sit in here. Now, what I'm presuming is going to be the case is that I'll get this, once this hose is out, this bracket will come off and um, I'll be able to separate them. Now, I don't know for sure until I get it apart, uh, but that's my own, uh, my expectation. So there's a uh, tie wrap just there, which I'll have to snip um, and obviously replace later on. But uh, yeah, so what I'm going to do in order to get that off, I'm going to quickly refit this bolt um, undo this line and then what I'll do um, is we'll bring it back in when we undo this one but yeah it's uh, it's going to be pretty straightforward it's not going to be too um, too taxing so yeah uh, give me a second just to get this hard line undone and then we'll bring it back 
uh, and we'll get the uh, we'll get the line removed from the bike. Right then, okay. Um, what I've done is I've got the uh, the hard line separated from from this line, but what it, what it actually transpires is that this bracket and this line are all one piece. Um, they're pretty bespoke. That does not separate from this bracket. So this bracket is no longer going to be any use to us um, moving forward. So this line is going to be basically connected to the hard line and then just rooted up. Um, and then all I'll have to do is um, just, just tie wrap it to these cables. I'll probably tie wrap it around this hard line as well just to hold it um, secure. Would have been nice had um, there been a new bracket installed, you know, with the kit or something like that, um, because there's no way you can uh, reuse that short of drooling all of this out. Uh, but I don't really want to have to do that. Anyway, moving on. Um, all we need to do now is unhook the cable from around everything. Uh, sorry, the hose from around everything even. And there we go, there we there we are, that's free. And then what I can do is disconnect the line there. And then what I'll do, I'll grab a bit of tissue just in case. Just stick that down there. I think we'd be okay because nothing's coming out of the other end of the line. Um, but you never know. that there and there we go and there's the banjo and the washer and that is that is the line here yeah, so as you can see that is all one piece um, and not removable from the bracket so yeah I'm a bit disappointed that it didn't include a new bracket I mean you know we could um, I could probably remove that in fact you know what Let's have a little look what we can do here. Yeah, that's what I'm going to do. I'm going to remove this this line and that that portion there from this bracket. I'm going to drill it out and I'm going to make it so that that will fit into it. That's what I'm going to do. I'm going to, uh, yeah. So what I'll do, I'll have a play around with that. Um, I'll probably use a grinder just to take it all off. And uh, I might even use my bench grinder just to finish it, make it look nice. Uh, but yeah, I, I should be able to do something with that. So yeah, I'm gonna I'm gonna reuse the bracket because I just think it'll be a better solution than just leaving it hanging. So yeah, what I'll do, I'll get on with that, and then um, we'll bring it back in when we're uh, when we're ready to install the line. Right, what I've done, as you can see, is obviously I've modified the bracket so that that fits through. Um, absolutely lovely, and that's um, uh, what I've done is once I've uh, you know ground it all down. What I've done is I've got a little lick of paint, and, and as you can see, it's not quite dry yet. So what I'm going to do, and I'll leave that for the moment, just hanging up there, just to just to dry off. But what we can do is we can um, we can fit this. So uh, yeah, the. Um, the hose for the, the master cylinder um, literally fits on on here just like just like so. Really is that straightforward and then comes down through here and then we'll basically bend up like so and go in into the bracket that we've modified. Um, just like just like that. So what we'll do, um, obviously I can't use the bracket until it's dry, but I can obviously fit this part here. So I've got my I've got my banjo ready with me washers. So I'll get that in and started. And there we go. So that comes down to about there and then the hard line will come up through the hole. So that, this here, this fitting actually fits quite snugly into the hole in the bracket and then that will come up to meet it and then they'll obviously join together. And then there was a tie wrap around all of this lot that kept it all um, 
kept it all together and doesn't restrict movement of the forks so yeah we're uh, we're in a good place now obviously that part there with that little bracket will come to later but i need to leave it to dry so i don't want to um i don't really want to disturb that uh right now so that little plastic cover can go there for the moment so it's not uh, in our way okay right that is pretty much the front end done with the exception of obviously that bracket um, so we can leave this end of the bike for now and we can start moving backwards. So what we can start looking at now is all of this lot here at the, uh, at the proportioning valve. Um, you know, there's quite a few lines here that uh, we need to look at. This, this one here is quite a short one and it only goes from there to there. This one here comes across to here. And then we've got two at the bottom here underneath here these two lines both go down to the caliper so yeah we've got quite a lot to be getting on with um we've got quite a lot to disconnect we've also got another one here with another block on it that comes from the rear master cylinder from here up to here to that hard line so so yeah i think what we'll do next i think is this one we'll do this one next um because that's probably the easiest out of all of these because all the uh maybe yeah this one then probably that one and then we'll see where we are from then onwards because then we're starting to get into routing territory and um, obviously, you know, there's, there's things in the way. So, yeah, this one first and then probably that one. Right then, so rear master cylinder up to this point, um, up to this hard line. What we're going to do is I'm going to, before I do anything else, is just crack off the hard line. Again, I'm going to obviously do what I can to prevent too much in the way of fluid loss. Just rip that out, and there we go. That's that done. This one's slightly different. All the other, all the other blocks have had bolts in, which were eight mil. For some reason, this one's this one's ten. same it's just the head of its um the head of its 10 right next the 12 mil banjo and there we go okay again a bit more tissue i'm going to go through some tissue on this one on this project that's for sure okay so banjo And the washer, then the other washer, which is just there. Give it a little dry to get any brake fluid. There we go. Okay, so now uh, there we are. And just maneuver the hose out. So this one obviously goes in its place and it went down there just like so. So there we go. That's basically how it's going to be rooted. This one, we need to get the hard line in. I'll get the hard line in first before we move on to anything else. That's up to touch and done. Now, this bolt, and get it into position and tighten her up. Okay, and 
then what I can do now is I can knit this one. And there we go. Okay. So now we can get the banjo in for that one. Absolutely perfect. Right, I'll go and grab a banjo and then we'll get that one fitted. There we go. That one there. That one on there. And then just turn it in by hand. There we go. So there we are. That is that one done. And again, I'll come around and talk more later. So from there up to here is now done. Okay, we've got another block up here with a hard line on it, which comes down from, from here. And we're gonna next, I think, do this line here and I think in order to get that one off, I think what we'll do is I'll loosen the banjo up here, loosen this because I think in order to get this end out, we're going to need to move this block out of the way. So um, yeah, we'll crack all these bolts and all the banjos so that we can move it all out of the way and then we can swap the line over. Okay, so first thing I'll do, get me 12 mil in there, crack this one. There we go. Same for this one. And then the hard line. So they're all done. done. So I'll whip this one all the way out. And then once all the lines are undone, we can take this bolt out and move this block out of the way. Is the thing. Yeah, I think we'd be able to. Yeah. Okay. I'll just drop my little washer, put that down there. And there's the banjo. Right then, what we'll do now is crack that bolt off and then this block will move. There we are, right. So, now, what we can do is shift all of this out, like so, and then this one will come off. And there we are. Okay, so obviously it goes on that way, the same way we, could, we brought it off. So what I'll need to do now is get my new line, get it on here, get it started. We don't need to tidy it up, but um, obviously we need to be able to maneuver the hose around. But I'm getting it in, get it started, maneuver this back into position, get everything bolted up, um, get the, the other end in here bolted up and then Obviously we can then nip everything together um, once it's in position. So I'll go and grab the line, grab the banjos, and then we can get it installed. Okay, so what I'm gonna do is obviously I'm gonna install it in the same orientation that the old one was, looking at the orientation of the banjos, you know, the necks, uh, the angles, and all that sort of stuff. 
So it went on kind of like that. So what I need to do is I need to install that one that way around. I've got my banjo here. Washer. And there we go. Just get them up to touch. And that's it, that's it for the moment. Okay, so what I need to do now is I need to maneuver this into position. Get the hard line started. There we are. Up to touch, just like so. Actually, what I've done here is I've got that round the wrong way. That should be over there. There we go. So yeah, that was that was on the wrong side of the hose. So this now goes on there like that. And I've got another banjo here for that. maneuver it into the right place and get it started and there we go that's that And then, now, we can put this bolt back in, securing the block to the bracket. There we go. Okay, so again, as I said before, we'll come back round and tighten all the, uh, all the banjos up at the end. Right. Now, yeah, looking at this, I am going to have to, I am going to have to remove the, uh, the reservoir and its associated hosing and all that good stuff because it's in the way of these two banjos under here. Now these two here are the ones that go over to, I believe, go down. Uh, let me just check. Yeah, yeah, but right. So both of these two here go down to the rear caliper and then that's those two to the rear caliper done and then there's one more just here which goes across to the other side of the bike so i think what we'll do next is the one that goes to the other side of the bike and leave the ones to the rear caliper uh, till the end right then here is the hose that goes from here and it goes across to the other side of the bike there is a, another valve just here and it goes basically to the underside of that it goes like that so what we need to do is obviously we need to get this one off. And there we go. Uh, let's use that bit. There we go. Take this banjo out. And the washers. There we go. Dump them down there. So, as you can see, it goes down under the sub under the subframe down here and then comes out underneath this so what we need to do is we need to take this off um, and then we need to feed the new hose down under there and make sure it comes out on that side and obviously we need to get it the right way around so this end goes this side as you can see the the angle of the band is matches up and then that one goes over to there so let's uh, swap on the other side of the bike and then undo this one. Okay, so here we have the other side. And as you can see, we've got this, um, this contraption on the top of this, um, of this hose with a bleed nipple in the top of it. So what we need to do is we need to remove that. Um, and what we'll do, because we can, is we can get the ring spanner over the top to crack it off. And there we go. And now we can remove 
that banjo. Making sure we mop up any spills. And there we go. That is uh, that is that. So we can now should be able to pull the brake line through, making sure it's not getting hooked on anything. And there we are. So that is the uh, that's the old one removed. So now we can feed in the uh, the replacement. Right then, what we're gonna do is we're gonna feed the feed the hose through where it needs to go, making sure it comes out in the right place, which it hasn't yet. And there we go, that is now in the right place. Right, so what we need to do here is we need to reuse this because you obviously you don't get a new one of these in the uh, in the kit, so we need to reuse this one. Pop the washers on. Let's get this cable out of the way. This is the cable for the heat grips. Move that out of the way. Right, there we go. Okay, so let's get that in. And again, what I'm going to do is just get it up to touch. I'm not going to, I'm not going to overly tighten anything down until such time as everything's rooted correctly. And there we go. That's that down. Just give it a little nip, like so. We can put that back on so it doesn't get lost. And there we are. So that's that one in place. And yeah, I'm happy with happy with the rooting so far. So now back over to the other side to do the other end of this hose. Okay, so here we are back over the other side. And again, as before, let's get the banjo in with both its washers. And then we need to make sure that it's correctly orientated and then get the get the bolt started. There we go. And there we are. So that's that one done, that one done. We'll tighten that one down later. Right, next is the two lines that go down to the rear caliper. And as you can see, they are both here, one and two. So the reservoir needs to come out of the way. So I'll get that out of the way. It's literally just a 10 mil bolt up here, um, holding the uh, holding the reservoir into this bracket. Then the hose comes down here, there's a zip tie, and then this um, this little spring clip here. So we'll get the spring clip off, and then uh, yeah, we'll be good to go. I'll leave, in fact, no, I won't. I'll leave that spring clip alone. I'll take the screw out um, of the black, uh, the back of the, uh, the master cylinder instead. There is a screw just here, a little JS screw. We'll take that out instead um, and leave that on. So I'll get all that off, get that out of the way, and then we'll bring it back and we can look at disconnecting this end. Right then, okay, so I've removed the uh, I've removed the reservoir, as I said, I was gonna just pull it out of the way um, to give us access to the two lower banjos. And obviously those banjos are what's connected to these two brake hoses here that go down to the rear caliper. Now, underneath here, there is a bracket and you can see the, the end of the bolt here and the head of the bolt is obviously on that side. And the two hoses go into these rubber grommets here that are held by this bracket to keep them, um, you know, to keep them uh, in position. Uh, so there's that we need to disconnect. And then these two Allen headed bolts just here, which hold them to the top of the chain, chain guard. So what I'll do, I'll um, get that bracket uh, out of the way. I'll get these two, um, these two uh, allen headed bolts out and we'll basically be in a position to then um, just remove the banjos and pull the lines out so i'll get on with that and then we'll bring it back uh, in a moment 
Okay, so what I've done is I've removed that little bracket and the two Allen headed screws that were on top of the uh, the chain guard. Now I'm not gonna lie, the little, the little bolt holding that bracket in place was a pig because there's not a lot of room to get in there and I had to use a stubby little 12, uh, 10 mil spanner which I found in the, uh, in the cupboard in order to be able to get in there um, and get it off, it was a right pain. Um, so I'm, yeah, prepare yourself for that. It was, it, it was a bit of a nightmare to get out, but I got there in the end. Anyway, okay, so what we need to do is obviously at this end is <coughs> crack off both of these banjos. <sighs> there we are. Okay, so what I'm gonna do, I'm gonna do them both um, obviously, but I'm gonna do one at a time, um, just so that I get them rooted correctly. And again, as before, put a little bit of tissue down just in case. the other washer okay so what I'll do now is pop that down and then um, from the other side I'll pull it out and then I can pay attention to the way the direction in which it takes as it comes up to this point so I'll go to the other side I'll pull that hose out and then we'll disconnect it from the caliper There we are. So I've followed, paid attention to where it goes. Uh, and this one sits on the outside of the two hoses. And she comes round to here. If I move myself over here, we can feed it out of this bracket. Obviously this bracket can be taken off, but I don't need to, so I'm not. And then it simply bolts onto the back of here. And then we are. And the washer as well, we need the washer. There we go, got it. So that is that line removed. As you can see, we've got three of the little grommets to hold it in position. And obviously it went in that way around. Um, so yeah, what I'll do, I'll go and grab the, uh, the replacement off the bench and we can start getting that one installed. Okay, as you can see, obviously I've selected the correct hose because it matches the banjos off of the old one. So I can now ditch that, no longer required. And then what we can do here is now start to get it installed. So I've got a banjo here with the bolts. Oh, sorry, with the washers even. And then all I need to do Let's bend down here and get it installed. And there we are, just like so. Again, I haven't tightened it as yet because we want to get the root in right first and we'll feed it up through. There, okay. So we've got three of these. Obviously one goes there, one goes there, and the other one goes on the bracket, but that's gonna be under here. And then what I need to do is feed it up so that it comes up out the other side. And I believe we're there. Okay, so. Obviously the bracket will be the last thing that we look at. Let's get the dirt out of the way. There we go. Yeah, so the bracket up here will be the last thing that gets reinstalled. And I reckon that we're about there now. Okay, so back over to the side and let's get this banjo installed. Here we have it. Plenty of slack on it as well. Let's get that in there, that on that side. Oops, got hooked. Right. Now this is going to be probably a little bit of a, a little bit of a pain because I can't. Oh, there we are. Now I can't get my hand around there to 
feed the cable so I've got to kind of orientate it using the banjo at the same time as trying to screw it in which is a little bit awkward but let's see if I can yeah that's unfortunately you don't have a lot of room around this banjo to get your fingers around it because there's a plastic under tray in the way As you can see, this is what I mean by the plastic under tray. It just stops you getting your fingers around the banjo. This bit of plastic here is annoying. Come on, get in there. Yeah, I'm struggling to get it started. Ah, there we go, we've got it. We've got it. Okay, and then we are, that's that one. That is that one in. So that took a bit of a bit of effort, um, but we're in now. And again, I'll leave it loose until we've got everything, everything rooted where it needs to go. Okay. So now we've got this one loose. And what we'll do now is same as before, just undo it. Cover the cover the banjo, mop up any mess that we've made, which actually is negligible. Just make sure. Okay, now obviously what we need to do again over to the side and just pull this hose out. There we go. That's that end. And as we did with the previous one, we'll feed it through. And there we are. Okay, now again, just crack the bands out. There we go. That's a little cap out of the Allen head bolt. And there we are. And we can pop it off. Okay. So. We need to make sure we get this the right way around. So that is the caliper end. And that is the, the other end that goes up through the bike. So what we'll do first is obviously because it fits in like so, is we'll get the, uh, throw that away, you don't need that anymore. We will get this part installed first. It goes on the inside of that one. goes on like that in that orientation because that's the way the old one came off grommets are where they need to be, feed that through and then up here like that, right, those two need to be down here 
and this one is up there. And then again, what we'll need to do is fold, feed this up where it needs to go until it comes out on the other side, which I think it actually just did. So, yet again, hang on, we've got the wrong side of the bracket, and we go the wrong side, there we go, that's it, right. Okay, so again, what we need to do now is get up the top and make sure that we get it correctly orientated and then get the banjo in. But yeah, they were, we're looking good. And then once we've done that, we can come back down here and get these in and I'll keep it in the right place. Okay, so now we have both the lines that go down to the caliper installed. Um, all I need to do is uh, just tie wrap the, the line for the ABS uh, on top of them as it was before. Uh, now, I'm not gonna lie, the bracket under here that holds them, that is an absolute swine to get the bolt back into because there's just no room to do anything. I was there for probably about 15 minutes trying to get that bolt in and swearing at myself and all sorts of stuff, but we got there in the end. Um, but be under no illusions. It's not easy to get that little bolt in there. It's probably the hardest part of this entire job. Anyway, all the lines are installed. Uh, I have got one line left over uh, and that is a clutch line. Now, I actually for completely forgot that I ordered a clutch line as part of this kit. Um, I had to go and check the uh, check the order, um, but because I ordered this like four months ago, I forgot that I also included a clutch line. So the clutch line obviously is included, but we're not going to do that as part of that video. I'll make that a separate one because um, I'm not do I'm not changing the clutch today. Okay, what I do need to do now is obviously go round and tighten uh, to torque every single banjo. Um, as I said earlier on, it's 14 pounds feet or 19 newton meters. So I'll go around, do all of those, uh, and then uh, I'll bring you back in and then we'll talk about what we've done. Okay, there we are. That is the braided lines uh, installed on the bike. A uh, bit of an epic, um, obviously, you know, fitting, fitting braided lines to most bikes is normally a pretty straightforward job. Not so on the VFR because there's a lot of them. Uh, access is limited and you know some of the stuff is just a pain to get to anyway we've got there now all that remains for me to do is literally just bleed the system up now obviously I'm not going to film all that because it'll probably double the length of the video as I said earlier so uh, I'll get that on with that myself uh, if you want to know how to do that then obviously click the link uh, at the top or the link in the description below uh, where, where I did that very very job Okay, um, I do have a clutch line to fit, but I'm going to make that a separate video. I'm not going to do that today. Um, but yeah, hopefully you uh, hopefully you found this video uh, entertaining, interesting, useful, whatever. Um, if you did, then obviously uh, leave a comment below and uh, I'll do my best to reply. Um, thanks very much, guys. Uh, I'll leave, uh, leave links to the Hell Performance website so you can go and have a look at the, uh, the VFR lines uh, below. And uh, yeah. Thank you. I'll uh, see you all again for the very next video. You guys take care. Bye bye now.